Welcome back, Mushroom Man Toad here, and in the video today, I've got two things for you. The first one is a command concept, which I'm very happy with, and it is, as the title suggests, an infusion altar. The second part of today's video is going to be some dispensers that slow down, but it's entirely nothing to do with redstone mechanics. Fade transition. All right, so you'll notice I now have some blaze powder in my inventory, and I'm just going to demonstrate the infusion altar before I get into even how it works. So the first part is you're going to have to build something like this. And I did just, of course, destroy my redstone torch, which I will need to rebuild. So you just need a block of obsidian with the redstone torch on top of it. And as soon as you throw on a blaze powder, it becomes an infusion altar. So now you've got a little, uh, little flame orbiting around it. And so you can do some basic infusion, right? So say you want, you have some sand and you really want soul sand. Well, you can just throw your sand on and boom, you'll get out a piece of soul sand. We throw on a piece of sand. Oh, but there's no flame. We need a flame. And now we throw on a piece of sand and we'll get back our soul sand and the little flame will go away. All right, so next up, I'm gonna throw on a piece of blaze powder and we're going to do one that's a little bit closer to me. It's this red mushroom and it is going to turn into a nether wart. Huh, well it didn't change. Oh, because the transformer red mushroom takes more power. A whole nother piece of blaze powder. So you need two of these little flames going in order to transmute a mushroom into a piece of nether wart. All right, my last demonstration involves me doing it with wither skulls. But before I do that, I'm going to walk through how the commands work because it's actually fairly simple. Now what I'm going to do for your sake is put the commands on the screen in the form of some kind of a text box so that as I'm explaining them, you don't have to like pay super close attention and read tiny little chat that looks like this. I, I don't, you, nobody wants to do that. So instead, I'll just put it up on the screen. You can see it now. We'll start off with the first command, which is just execute at any type equals armor stand, tag equals magic. And so you're just executing at its location and as it. You're going to execute at the armor stand. This separates it so that every armor stand is unique. That's what this part does. You're just going to teleport every magic armor stand forward one and rotate it by five degrees. And so you get an animation that looks like this. This little flame here, by the way, is the armor stand tagged magic. So our next command here is super, super long, but as you see, it's pretty simple once you break it down. So you're going to execute at every item that's a blaze powder and one single blaze powder. If the blocks match the altar and you want to align that X, Y, Z before you summon the armor stand, that way you get the armor stand to spawn right in the middle of the block. It just makes things a lot cleaner. And this armor stand is going to have the tag of magic. So what that just says is when you throw down the blaze powder, the armor stand will spawn right here and begin to orbit the altar via the first command block. So you've already got this awesome ring with just two commands, one to spawn it, one to do it. Up next, you're going to do again the execute at the item, which is the blaze powder. And if you've got the altar there, align it X, Y, Z just to make it cleaner, unless there is an entity that exists with the tag magic center that's right on it. So that's what the limit equals one distance equals two does. You're going to summon an armor stand with the tag magic center and all the armor stand tags. And that is going to be spawned right here in the center of the altar. So as you can see, I actually can't break the redstone torch because there is now an armor stand there. So you have to break the altar from the obsidian. And the magic center is also what's going to be used for detection when I go to uh, throw on the sand, for example. So you're detecting it from the magic center, not from the orbiting ones. It, again, it just cleans up the whole process. Another thing magic center is used for is keeping track of how many of these flames are circling it. That's something you have to do in order to get like the mushroom to only go when there's two on it, right? So if there's just one, I need that as a score somewhere to, to tell it, no, nope, don't do the mushroom unless you've got two blaze powder, right? So that, that's how that works. And then the final command here is just execute at at E type equals item blaze powder, so if you've got the blaze powder, if it's on the altar, then you're going to kill the blaze powder. And that is just so that when you throw on the blaze powder, it becomes part of the altar. So you don't just have an item sitting there spawning in perpetual of these little fire rings because nobody wants that. Even though it looks cool, it will lag out your game. This one here just does execute at the uh, magic armor stands and it does a particle command with the flame. So that's just to make the flame reel actually happen, which I'm just going to get going in the background here because I refer to it a lot. Our next command is going to be execute as at E type equals armor stance. So you're going to run it as you don't, we don't care about location. We just care about the armor stand. Then we're going to go at at S and we're going to store the result to a score. And that is going to be the score entity count on at S. So you'll see if I go 
scoreboard, objective, set display, sidebar, entity count. You'll see right now it says four. If I throw in another one, five, six, seven, right? And if I throw in a mushroom, it'll go back down to five, then three, then one, right? So that is how we keep track of the entity count. So it's going to store the result to the entity count score of the magic center. And then it, what it's going to do is tag every armor stand that's one of those little flame wheels, the magic armor stands, and it's just going to add the tag count. And so it'll store how many times it added that tag, and then it will remove the tag from all the armor stands, and that's not stored anything. That's just so on the next tick, it can re-add the tag and store it to a success. Next command is going to execute at every armor stand that has the tag magic center as the armor stand. So we're executing from the magic center. Run, and we're going to execute at that armor stand. So we're going to execute at the magic center. Unless the block is obsidian and unless it's on a redstone torch, it's going to kill all of the armor stands around it with the tag of magic. So in other words, if I break the altar, we don't want the flame wheels persisting. So right, if I have these flame wheels here, which I gotta get the blaze powder on the altar. There we go. If I have these flame wheels here, if I break the altar, we don't want those flame wheels to keep persisting. So it'll kill off the flame wheels. And the next command, the next one just kills off the magic center if it doesn't find that structure. We are going to actually build back the altar now and just throw on some uh, blaze powder to keep that effect going, because I like it. And so that is how the entire altar works. That's it. So now, when it comes to the infusion, it's three command blocks per infusion. So this one does red mushroom to nether wart. These three will do the wither skeleton skulls to the nether star. And these three here do the sand to the soul sand. And I'll just walk through how that works. And you'll see it's a big, big command that, again, is really simple once you break it down. So we're going to execute at every item that is a block of sand and just a single block of sand. And you're going to go, if there's an entity that's a type equals armor stand, tag equals magic center within two blocks with an entity count score of at least one. So all that says is if the armor stand in the middle has that entity count score set to at least one, you're going to run kill at E type equals armor stand, tag equals magic, limit equals one, sword equals near. So that just means get rid of one of the flames that's around it. So the next time the score will be one less for the entity count. This one here, is the exact same detection at the front, except now it's going to go summon an item that is a block of soul sand, and so that way you can actually change your sand into soul sand. And then finally, you probably guessed it already, it's just going to kill the block of sand. Now, the reason we can do this and leave it with that same detection of the entity count equals one, that entity count won't be updated until the next time this whole loop cycles. So even though the armor stand is no longer there, the entity count stays until the next tick. So we can continue to operate as if the armor stand is still there, even though we killed off the armor stand in this first command. And as you can see here, to uh, change how much it costs, it'll just change this limit to 2. And then in all the command detections, just change this entity count number to 2 or whatever number you want to change it to. And then finally, to demonstrate the wither skeleton skulls, I know, right? Big long command explanation, now we get into something a little bit more fun. And in order to do this, you'll see here that the cost is 64. So we're going to need a lot of blaze powder. So, watch as this dispenser gradually starts ticking slower. As you can see, it's pretty fast, you know, good dispenser speed. It's just going to kind of keep going, keep throwing out blaze powder. It'll sometimes throw a little bit over, you know, that's how dispensers are. And as you can see, it is beginning to slow down, and we are only on about 80 armor stands. Just shy of 80 armor stands. Okay, now we're over. As you can see, it's already slowing down. It does, in fact, get rather slow. And so in order to infuse it, I'm, I'm going to shut this off now. Eh, I'm not. Nah, never mind. We'll just leave it going for now. It'll, it'll you can just keep taking these stuff out. So in order to do the infusion, you need not one wither skull to make another star, because that makes no sense. Not two. And no, not even three, because you're skipping out on the wither battle. It's going to cost you the full four skulls. And then you can get another star. And now, watch as I really mess with this dispenser. I hope you enjoyed that half as much as I did. Thank you for watching. This has been Mushroom Man Toad with the command concept. And I will see you in the next one. Also, if you're wondering about the fish at the beginning, it's Mumble the Cod. I hope that answers every question you had.